If you want to be great in God's kingdom, let to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, let to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great, in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great, in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. It's not one a lot of people seek after, but I tell you what, when we please the Lord and we're his servant, he blesses us. You know that. So let's make the place where you are a holy place. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you and give you the miracles that you need. Come expecting God to change something in your life that needs to be changed. Let it not just be an ordinary evening. Let us praise God and look to him and know that he's here to help us. Let's welcome the presence of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can gather together as your family once again. And we celebrate the victories that some have gone through today. And Lord, we ask that you be with those who are struggling in their needs and bringing prayer requests. You're the God of everything and teach us how to trust you no matter what. Make this place a holy place so that the Holy Spirit can perform his miracles and encourage us. We pray, accept our praises and worship tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's sing together. Amen. Hallelujah. As I journey through the land and singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson foe, many arrows pierced my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, through Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him, look, look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. There's a past home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the light. But I'll cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, he will ever be tied. Oh, I want to see him look up upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares of past, oh man, that's ever to rejoice. When in valid low I look, towards the mountain high. And 
behold my Savior there, leading in the fight, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low, guiding me, I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face, there to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares of past, oh, mad last, ever to rejoice. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then the Lord directs my part, He the safety keeps, and He leads me gently on to this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love Him so. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face, then to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares of past, oh, mad past, ever to rejoice. There's going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, how I long to meet you over there, away beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. To be glorious, I do declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one in the meeting in the air. There's going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, how I long to meet you over there, away beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, to be glorious I do declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one, in the meeting in the air when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace, in the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all Jesus will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sign when we all day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the call of life repay when we all get to heaven what a day of re-
rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon His beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, say it one more time. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. open the clouds to bring the glory of God in. Amen. It's one word that you can understand in any language. Praise God. Well, I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad that you didn't get so homesick for heaven that you went to heaven. I was trying to make heaven very appealing to those of us who are going through some trials and tests. And I know that God knows exactly what to do for us. And I hope that this morning's message was encouraging to you that whatever we're going through is just temporary. This world is just temporary. So it, we shouldn't be fighting over anything that is temporary. Nothing belongs to us, even ourselves, right? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow to us. God has bought us by the precious blood of Jesus and we're his for him to take care. Tonight, I'd like for us to turn to Psalm 27. Every once in a while, I said, as we go through the Psalms, to know the character of God, I hope that by the time we're finished meditating on all of the Psalms, as that rabbi did and recommended for us to, we will know the glory of God so that it will transform our lives. And every once in a while, I'm not doing it chronologically, but I'll share with you one of my favorite psalms. And Psalm 27 is one of those psalms. And they say, you know, scholars who study this have said that this psalm probably was being written by David as he was preparing to become king. And, you know, that... He didn't reach that position overnight from being a shepherd boy and killing Goliath. And the next day he was the king. No, it was not like that. It was a journey. And we are all on a journey. And actually, when you look down, yours might seem, your road might seem a little easier than mine. Have you ever heard that saying, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence? And I know some burdened down mothers with, especially single mothers, who look at my life. They say, oh, you're so blessed. You don't have anything, you know, but yourself to take care of and so forth. But we all are on the same path toward heaven because of Jesus. And we all, I call it obstacle courses, specifically designed for us. In our class we had this week, it's because God sees us as unique and he's got a purpose for us that is different from anybody else's. We have a special work to do for the Lord. And as I was reflecting on this, I kind of applied it to my own life. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll make it come real to each one out there. Father, I pray that one of my favorite psalms will become a favorite of somebody out there who's struggling to know who you are and what you're going to do for them. So, Lord, bless our hearts. May our hearts receive the life of your word so you can change us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Some of you who are listening to me have been called to the ministry. Some of you are retired already. Uh, some of you are just beginning ministry. And so when we look at this psalm, I want us to realize that David now was facing this enormous task of being king of Israel. He knew his calling. He knew that he was going to be king when Samuel came to his dad's house and anointed him to be king. But it was a journey. It wasn't like, okay, you know, prepare in three months you'll be king. He had to go through many things. He had to uh, flee for his life many times. And the present king Saul, the first king of Israel, was jealous of him because he was younger and he, you know, he was, he had many military victories like killing the giant and then the women you know they said Saul has killed his thousands but David's killed his ten thousands oh that's the worst thing you can do a guy, to a guy and, and, and beat up on his ego and he didn't feel good about it so there was jealousy in Saul's life let me say this whatever our calling there will always be somebody who's going to fight us Whatever you have to do, there's going to be somebody that will discourage us or somebody that's going to try to get us out of God's will. But let's look at this and learn who God is. Let's not study problems. David had his problems. He had to flee for his life, running from Saul. He fell into sin, committed adultery and murder. His son Absalom killed another son, Amnon. He was cursed by one of Saul's men. He was deserted at a point by his own supporters. And so he had everything that I think we would go through if we were given a challenge. But we want to learn about God's character. One thing we have common with David is that we have the same God. I remember when... My dad passed away very suddenly. I had been his associate for a while. And uh, as his health was waning, I preached every other Sunday, then later on every Sunday. And then he passed away after a rather short illness. And so there was nobody around. I had carried on a lot of the ministry here, so I was kind of expected to fill in his shoes And like he, I was willing to be willing to do it temporarily until they found somebody. You know the story of my dad. The missionary had to leave right after the Second World War. And uh, my father was a new convert. And the board says, Brother Chang'an, just take the pastorate there in Wailuku temporarily. So he was pastor here temporarily for 45 years until his death. And his promotion was heaven. And so I kind of thought that eventually we were just going into our building project. And, and so my brother and sister came and said, you know, Barbara, we're going to help you. Uh, you take care of the church ministry and we'll form a building committee and we'll take care of the building project. My dad had met with the architect just once and then got sick. And so I remember coming to the altar in the old church the day before I was supposed to be ordained, and, and I cried at the altar. I was there on a Saturday night till about midnight. And I said, God, why me? Why now? You know, common cries that Moses said, I cannot speak. I'm the shyest of my family. All these common excuses people use to get away from doing what God wants them to do. And so I was feeling sorry for our, myself. Just remember... Pity parties don't get you anywhere. And if you have a pity party, nobody wants to come. And so we're going to learn how to go to God because he's going to help us. And so that night, I thought I was so burdened. I, I didn't really have a joy. I wasn't looking forward to all the celebration that was going to be. And then as I was wearily praying about midnight, I heard the Lord say, I used a donkey once, you know. I said, oh, that's right. Here's another donkey. 
And so for years, maybe two, three years, every Saturday night as I went to church to pray for the next day's service, I would say to the Lord, here's the donkey again. And one day the Lord rebuked me. And he says, enough of that. You're not a donkey. You're my servant. Stand up. Be strong. Be courageous. And then this passage came to me that made it very special because David was feeling like that before his coronation. Oh, now that I'm going to be king, I kind of was excited that I was going to be king. But I had to go through so many obstacles. I don't know if I can make it. Let me tell you this. We learned this week that whatever experience you went through, good or bad, because God is creator God. When you're rebelling, when you're stubborn, when you're disobedient, but you've given your heart to the Lord and you want to do his will, he will crush you, he will sh cut off some parts of your heart and your skin and whatever, and you're going to have a hard time until you submit to his will. But even those hard things that made it hard for you, God promises to use it to fulfill his purpose in your life. So God doesn't waste anything. But here is the psalm. And the first part of this psalm, the first uh, three verses, I'm going to read that first. Because we want to have confidence in God. How many of you have confidence in Hawaiian, the Hawaiian Airlines pilot? When I talk about trust and confidence, I always think about us in Hawaii, you know. We like to take goodies to the next island. Every island has a special goodie that if you have relatives there, you got to take that, you know. And I think even now, we're the only ones that have that Krispy Kreme. So I see people carrying boxes of Krispy Kreme to Honolulu. I don't know if they have it now, but anyway. You know... And we never ask about the pilot. We, we just assume that everything is going to be okay. So don't tell me you don't have faith, people in Hawaii. If you've ridden the plane and never asked if the pilot had a fight with his wife, that you have a lot of confidence in him. And a lot of us have had confidence in our pilots were drunk later on, we found out, and, and they had to be taken off the job and whatever. But we have so much confidence in man. And so I want us to go to the word of God so that our confidence will be built in Christ alone, in God, the Father. In the Old Testament, you will find that he is righteous, he's just, he is merciful, he is kind, he is all-knowing, all-powerful. There's nothing he cannot do. And when he gives you an assignment, he goes and helps you complete it. So I like reading the Old Testament because it tells us about God and his character. He is so steadfast, so righteous. He sets down everything in laws. I, I explain you know, a lot of times about the astronauts going to the moon and coming back. I mean, he's so perfect in his mathematical calculations and getting everything in order and coordinating everything that man can study that and can do marvelous things. So let's look at this and see about who God is. I'd like for you, the second part tells us about the personal relationship David had with God. Let me tell you this. Nothing can beat your own personal relationship with God. I know many times when people have trials and tests, they run to the pastor. I'm glad to comfort you and strengthen you and help you and guide you. But I tell you this, there's nothing as wonderful as knowing God yourself. And so when you have a need, I want you to be optimistic, like I was trying to get you to be optimistic about what's happening around us. There's so many uh, things that are uncertain and, and so many rumors about this and, and uh, fears about that. But if we know God, if we know that this world is temporary, I'm just passing through. This is really not my home. God has prepared a place for me. Then we can carry on in this life. But while we're here on earth, we've got to handle life. And so 
when we look at this, I want us to look at it as maybe a prayer to God. But I don't want us to look at it as David beseeching God. You look at it carefully. And God, help me. God, I need light in my life. Please provide for me this. What he is saying here in this psalm is a declaration of God on who he is. When you pray, instead of declaring, you know, or, or a beseeching God, saying, God, I need this. God, you know, please help me in this. Start declaratory prayers. That means declare, God, your word said that you're my healer. I declare you healer of my body, healer of my soul. I declare you. I command in Jesus' name that you will supply all my needs. I command that whatever comes my way, you're going to have a path to go through that trial or test. You're going to bring, declare it instead of beseeching. If you can get that concept, you'll have stronger prayers and better answers to your prayer. Listen to what David said in the first verse. I'm going to read it till the third. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Remember, he had to fight Saul, King Saul. Remember, he had to hide in caves. Remember, his own people got mad at him and wanted to kill him. Remember that in himself he was weak. He fell into temptation. And so he could have reflected on that. But instead, you will learn from this, that David did not bemoan all of his mistakes and the trials. He had learned something about God. Listen, I don't know if you journal, but learn something about God through your trial or through your victory. God is ever disclosing his character to us, and if we pay attention and mark it, we're going to see how we have grown in the Lord and how much we know about him. There'll be some times that in the future you might get discouraged and you look back in your journal and you find out, I went through a similar situation like this and this is how God resolved it. Learn about God. Declare him. David is declaring him from all of his challenges that he had just before he became king. He says, the Lord is the strength of my life. I'm going to be king, you know. Like I was kneeling at the altar, and I thought, how am I going to take care of all the sheep that my father had in his flock? How am I going to be a pastor? I, I was just a, a teacher. I love to teach God's word. I said I would have been, make, been a good pastor's wife. I like to teach the ladies, and I like to cook, and I like to entertain and I like to, you know, just fellowship with people. And so it was a different challenge for me. But I do know that the Lord is the strength of my life. Whatever calling you have, whatever assignment you have, and some of you might think that you're calling. I don't know why in recent days, the last few days, I've been so burdened and I've been praying for single mothers for little children, and sometimes they don't know where they fit or what's going to happen to them. They're, they're living a life of uncertainty, and many times these fragile mothers are burdened with the kids, trying to find a place for them to stay, trying to you know, teach them to do right, and they've got all of these challenges. I've been praying for you because I want you to know that when you go into God's word, don't sit around and tell your problems to your best girlfriend because she probably has the same problem and she cannot help herself, so neither can she help you. But when you go into God's word, whoever you are, God will feed you. David said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He had enemies coming trying to kill him. But the Lord helped him. So he said, I don't have to be afraid of anything. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, 
my heart shall not fear. He has chosen in advance as he becomes king not to fear an advancing army, not to fear anyone. And he says, the war may rise against me in this I will be confident. Who do you have your confidence in? In this world, we certainly need friends. When we're in trouble, we, we need prayer warrior friends. If you have financial needs, it's good to have a friend that can help you financially. If you have emotional needs, it's good to have somebody that you can, you know, lay your burdens at. It's good to have friends. But is your confidence in them or in God? Learn to put your confidence in God, whatever it is. In Jesus' name right now, there's, there's several people here that you are so insecure because you don't know what tomorrow will hold. You're frail, you're weak, you're beaten down. You're discouraged, you're in despair. But I pray that right now through the Holy Spirit, you'll be drawn closer to God. His word says, if you will draw near to me, I will draw near to you. So dear one, wherever you are, just say, Jesus, I come to you now. Help me. I'm broken. I cannot help myself. Nobody can help me, but I put my confidence in you. Thank you, Lord. I want you to cast your care upon the Lord right now. There's no better one that can help you. Say, Lord, my confidence is in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then the second part that I like, it tells us that God wants us to, for us to seek a relationship with him ourselves. It's good to have a prayer partner. It's good to have a group of people in a Bible study. But this is what David had. David wrote a lot of these psalms because of his solitude with God. I imagine it started out when he was a shepherd boy. I told you before what a lonely experience it is to be alone with just sheep. But his loneliness, he turned into a longing for God. And he sang these beautiful psalms to God. And God showed up and showed his character to David. So David had this in his heart. And he says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know, in King David's reign, they built a big palace for him. And then he remembered that the tabernacle in the wilderness still had the Ark of the Covenant, that the presence of God had no big, beautiful dwelling place. So he desired to build the temple, an ornate temple to God. But the Lord said, David, your hands are bloody. I will give that assignment to your son Solomon. And that's why Solomon built the temple. But he says, I want to be in the house of the Lord. I want to be close to you. You can worship by the beach and in the mountains and and wherever you want to, but there's something about coming to the sanctuary. We call this the sanctuary of God, the safe place. We, this is why we don't want people playing around or talking story or, or joking right here when there may be people at the altar seeking the presence of God. It's important that we have opportunity to do this David said, I like doing it myself. He says, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. He said, I want to come to know him and have that confidence in him that he's going to take care of me. And he says, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in the tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises 
to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Do you see that personal pronoun, I, my, not yours or ours? He had a very singular relationship with the Lord. Because there's some times when there'll be nobody around to help you. And if you know God and he knows your voice and when you call, you'll have confidence in him. So we declare him. We know that we don't have to fear because he's going to be there for us and we can have confidence in the Lord and we can have a personal relationship. This is why I just said it to somebody. God has no grandchildren. You cannot pray for your grandkids and, or your kids and, and, you know, intercede for them. They will have to make a choice for themselves whether they want to serve God. You love them. You know that they should go to heaven. But God wants a personal relationship with them. So don't be afraid when he begins to deal with them to get their attention because he's not willing that any should perish. We learned this morning. It says, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do you seek God's face or do you seek his hand? Give me, 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 Lord, give me. I need this. I need that. Or do you seek his face and just look into the eyes of one who loves you. Have you noticed lovers? Some of you have been lovers, okay. But I watch them sometimes, you know, at the restaurants or whatever. They sit like this and they're just looking at each other. Kind of smiling. I've got to teach James. Where is James? Just sit and smile. Just bond. You think, is that fun? Just looking at each other. But, you know, that's what we need to do with God. When you love somebody, you can just sit there quietly. You don't have to say anything and just smile at each other and bond. That's what God wants us to have in our relationship with him. You don't have to be talking to him all the time. Sometimes just get his word, his Bible, read a few scriptures, and just look into the heavens and tell him how much you love him. Say, Jesus, I really love you. Not for what you're going to give me or can give me. I just love you for who you are. You're the strength of my life. You're the rock of my salvation. You're the helper in the time of need. You're there when I call upon you. I love you. Just drink it in and spend that time with the Lord. And so then we go on to the ninth verse, and it says, Do not hide your face from me. And this third section of this, you will know that God will never forsake you. Did you know that? In our lives, you know, whether we're single or not, we've experienced friends, relatives, neighbors, associates forsaking us. I think all of us in some way have had the pain of being forsaken by somebody we trusted or loved. And so when we read this psalm, it's so comforting to me to know that when people forsake me, the Lord will never, he promises never to forsake us. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you're not feeling as close to God as you used to, who moved? Who moved? Not God. He said, I will never leave you. So you must have left him on the side or walked away from him. But tonight, you can make amends. You can invite him back. He says, draw near to me. I'll draw near to you. He's such a gentleman. He's not going to force his love on us. He's not going to force us to look him in the face and thank him. He wants us to give him the only thing he doesn't own in this world, our heart. It's a gift that we can give to him. The only thing is our adoration, our loyalty, our honor, our reverence. That is the gift we can give to God. And so 
in this part, he says, he'll never forsake us. Listen to this, because I know that some of you have been forsaken, like we heard Dr. Garnet Pike's story. In, in this first course, he taught us to write the story of our life. And remember I said that at one time, I wanted everybody to write a short testimony, your own personal testimony, and the Friday night people, the Mikos from Japan, they have little tracks that says my story or my miracle. And so people in their Bible study have it printed out and they pass it out when they go to the restaurant. This is my story, this is my miracle. And they share the love of Christ like that. But when we heard Dr. Pike's story, he is 84 years old now and well-respected internationally. He is the Pentecostal holiness denominations, um, if you want to say the expert on the Holy Spirit. If they want a lecturer, a scholar on the Holy Spirit, he's written books on it. Uh, he's just well-respected. But he started as an abandoned orphan. His mother didn't want him. And so he was in an orphanage. And then somebody, a godly couple, adopted him and groomed him to be the man he is. But I meet so many people who started off forsaken. And this passage, I think, would comfort those of you who've had a hard time in your early childhood and it scarred you. You can move on from your scars because Jesus says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he says... David is saying, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. I am going to have this task of being king of Israel. I need you. Don't forsake me. Be with me. And then it says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. I've had the privilege of quoting that scripture to many a hurting young person and old, feeling abandoned and hurt by their own parents. And I said, you know, you're very special to the Lord. If you're one that experienced your parents' rejection, then let me tell you, this scripture means you're extra special to the Lord. Because he will never leave you, even when your mother and father forsake you. It says that the Lord will take you up. And then this last part, God is trustworthy. I want you to think of five people in your life that are totally trustworthy, totally loyal to you, will cover you when you fall, will stand by you when you're destitute, will always speak well of you in your presence and when they're not with you. Can you think of five people totally trustworthy? I hope you have five. But even if you don't, God is trustworthy. I think all of us, by the time we become adults, we have met people who have disappointed us. We trusted them, but they were not worthy of our trust. We put all our faith in them. Some of you have gone through divorces and things like that. You put your whole life into something, and they were not trustworthy. And sometimes we interpret that and think that God is not trustworthy because we don't know him as we did this friend who betrayed us. But no, God is God. And he shows that he's trustworthy. In the 11th verse to the end, it says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He thought, I never thought this day of coronation would come because I had to run for my life. I was betrayed by my friends. I had my own faults. 
but God, you're faithful, you're trustworthy, because what you said when I was a young boy and had the prophet Samuel anoint me and say, you're going to be king, you're going to make me king. After all of my failures, after all of my battles, after all that I've gone through, you're now making me king. In Philippians 1.6, one of my favorite verses, and those of you who are new in the Lord and you're thinking, I hope I make it to heaven. I've chosen Jesus, but I still have so many faults and, and I stumble and, and I disappoint God. Let me tell you what, in Philippians 1.6, it says, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. As long as you don't change your mind and want to go the other direction, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. Come back to Jesus because we are confident that he who has begun a good work in you, you may be battered, you may be weak today, you might be you know, disappointed, you might not be a blessing today, but keep your trust in the Lord because your trust in the Lord is what's going to get you to heaven. It's not how you perform, but how you believe. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So keep on believing even if you don't feel like it sometimes. Even if you feel unworthy sometimes, keep on believing and let him carry you through. It says, wait on the Lord in conclusion, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait. It's kind of a painful word. We don't like to wait. We want things right now. But there's something about waiting that matures us. How many of you like green mango? Anna Carol likes green common mango to put in shoyu and vinegar. I like mine to mature. You eat green mango, you can eat it right away. But if you like Hayden, if Hayden's watching tonight, if you like Hayden mango, oh, you get the green one. Sometimes people give it to me. And I have to wait sometimes three days, sometimes almost a week. Oh, but when I wait, I can begin to smell the fragrance of the mango. And I know it's going to take delicious. Waiting is so hard, so hard. But it is a process of making us sweet. It's a process of maturing us. It's a process of making us a blessing. Wait on the Lord. Know him. Be confident in him. Draw from him like in as in osmosis, to stay in his presence. Draw his strength. Draw his trustworthiness. He will prove himself that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let us pray. Father, every week as we come to worship you, we pray that we will be stronger and better that we will not wallow in our old circumstances, but we will wade through them, knowing that you will take us through. We won't get stuck, Lord. I pray for peace. There's some that are wrestling in their soul. They don't have peace. I pray that you will give them perfect peace. In Jesus' name. Let's just worship the Lord now with a few songs and then we'll come back for our closing prayer. I want us to learn to wait on the Lord. Listen to his voice. Don't rush from his presence. He wants to whisper something in your heart tonight. Let him do it as we finish our service by waiting on him. Amen. Jesus. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. 
I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Your mercy flows like a river wide And healing comes from your hands Suffering children are safe in your arms There is none like you There is none like you no one else could touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you There is none like you No one else could touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Your mercy flows like a river wide And healing comes from your hands Suffering children are safe in your arms There is none like you There is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior I know for sure All of my days are held in your hand Crafted into your perfect plan you gently call me into your presence guiding me by your holy spirit teach me dear lord to live all my life through your I'm captured by your holy calling Set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself Lead me, Lord, I pray Take me, mold me give my life to the potter's hand call me guide me lead me walk beside me I give my life to the potter's hand Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure All of my days are held in your hand Crafted into your perfect plan You gently call me into your presence guiding me by your holy spirit 
teach me, dear Lord, to live all my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray. Take me, mold me, use me, fill me. I give my life to the potter's hand. Call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the potter's hand. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like all of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath all that i am never cease to worship you shout to the lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the king Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have 
somebody with a terrible sinus headache tonight and God is healing you right now. Receive that in Jesus name. Somebody with ringing in your ears. God is healing you in Jesus name. Somebody's having a hard time swallowing. Not only tonight but every once in a while you get choked. Let God heal you tonight completely in Jesus name. Somebody with some bruised knuckles, in Jesus' name, be healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do your work, Lord. Somebody about to be evicted, and you're worried, you're concerned. Trust the Lord. Give everything to Jesus. Father, I pray for creative ideas in this one who's worried tonight. Clear their mind. And Lord, let them know that you know their plight and they're to call on you and you will open doors where there seems to be none. Lord, lift the burden. Comfort us in these last days when things are very difficult. You're the same, Lord. You will provide for us. We pray for our... Christian brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and other places that are going through tremendous persecution. What we're going through is nothing compared to what they're faced with. So you're going to sustain them. We ask that you continue to do miraculous deliverances. They are rescues. Protect your children everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. Protect Israel. We pray for the peace of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heal emotions now, Lord. Heal troubled hearts, Lord. Oh, Give the miracles that people are expecting tonight. We release your anointing and send it out, Lord. Oh, yes, we believe in the power of prayer and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray for favor. Somebody's going for a job or interview, and we pray for favor for you in Jesus' name. We give you thanks, Lord. You will provide for every need. In Jesus' precious name, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You never fail us. Thank you, Jesus. I just love closing the Lord's Day in peace and being with you, those of you on Facebook. Tonight in closing, I have requested our praise team to sing a song that I think most of you know and love, and the song is He Touched Me. Today, I experienced a great miracle that happened only through prayer, supernatural things. One of these days, I'll be able to tell you the details of it, perhaps. But God was working, and there are two special people that I've been praying for, and God did a miracle for them. But I also would like to dedicate this song to an evangelist friend of mine. I have never met him, but he and I have partnered and praying for people, and we have seen miracles, and this miracle today was part of it. And I want him to be encouraged. He has a wife that is not well, and he needs to, you know, take care of her, and he's done well. 
He travels sometimes, and I know recently he's been very weary, but he did not give up on this project. And he's the one, the first one to tell me that something wonderful happened. And this is a song I'd like to dedicate to them tonight. He touched me because the Lord touched these. And Brother Bryce, get a touch from the Lord for yourself tonight. In Jesus' name. We'll close with the song. If you know it, sing it with us. And let's kind of liven it up and close with this. I know you've been touched. If you're born again, God has given you your miracle. Let's celebrate tonight in closing. Amen. Shackled by a heavy burden Need the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, He touched me And oh, the joy that floods my soul Something happened And now I know He touched me and made me whole Since I met this blessed Savior Since He cleansed and made me whole I shall never cease to praise Him I'll shout it while eternity goes He touched me Oh, He touched me And all oh, the joy that floods my soul Something wonderful happened And now I know He touched me And made me whole Let that Jesus touch you tonight let him set you free. Let him give you comfort. Let him wrap his arms around you and give a big hug tonight. Jesus is enough. Look to him and he will be there for you. I love you very much. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Stay close to Jesus because he may come and rescue us soon. God bless you. Be a blessing to someone. Good night. Bye.